Well, the topic that we discuss in now is about si bueno, arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence. So we study two special sequences. The first one is arithmetic sequence. Okay, I want to explain. It's super easy to understand. Arithmetic. Sequence. Uh, one example of the arithmetic sequence is, for example, suppose four, comma six, comma eight, comma ten, comma dot dot dot. Uh, so you can see okay, in this sequence, the so you subtracting that number, six minus four is two, eight minus 6 is 2, 10 minus 8 is 2, it's always 2. And this is called a common difference. Uh, and we call like a D, little D, common difference. So the formula, the explicit formula to the any arithmetic sequence, the piece of information that we need is a1, okay, is the first one. A1 is the first. In our example four, the first element in the sequence is four. And the common difference is D gets two in this example. No? And the formula is A sub N for any position is equal A1 plus parenthesis N minus one D. It's a formula, super important formula. Okay, give me a sub m, so in any position of the sequence, you can determine that. If so you apply this formula in our specific example, look, a1 is 4 plus a minus 1, and common difference is 2. Okay, you manipulate a little bit, 4 plus, you apply this trivity to m minus 2. So a sub m is equal to m plus 2. This is the specific formula to find any value of this. For, for example, I want to compute this was n1. Remember, this is the index is m 1, 2, 3, 4. Suppose that I am using n equal 4, a sub 4. a sub 4 is 2 times 4. Plus two. A four is equal to a plus two. I think. Ah, oh, exactly the same. We predict. Well, this is easy, but oh, suppose that I need to find a to the five hundred. Eh? Because it is, it's, it's the form. Okay. One more example. One more example. Suppose one easy. This is an example two. Suppose two six. 10, 14, 18. Uh -huh. And this continues forever, guys. And this is what the what is the question? Is it find the the well in this case I want to find the formula a sub m. Uh -huh. uh, also a in the position 41. Okay. So I identify it's a common it's a arithmetic sequence. Let me see, let me check it. Subtracting 6 minus 2, 4. 10 minus 6, 4. 14 minus 10, 4. 18 minus 14, 4. It's D is equal 4. And A is 1 is equal to. It's the first one. And the simple. So not exactly the first one. It's, yeah, it's the first one because it's N equal 1. And you know that the domain of the, of the function that is equivalent to the sequence uh, the domain is the natural number, and the natural number starting one, no? One, two, three, four, five. No, it's zero and one. Uh huh. To so say now the formula is a sub m is equal a is one plus a minus one times d. Therefore, in our specific example, a sub m is two because a one is two plus n minus 1 times 4, because the common difference is 4, 
and the rest is easy. 2 plus 4m minus 4. This is the formula, the specific formula is 4m minus 2. This is my first answer. And my second is compute the, the element in this sequence and the position 41. Okay, no problem. I try. It's 4 times 41 minus 2. Uh -huh. The answer is 162. Easy, eh? Okay, that's it. No. No, no. One more thing I want to discuss with you and the arithmetic sequence is the summation. So when you have in arithmetic sequence uh, any element, you can find the sum. So the sum of arithmetic sequence. Uh, the sum is, you know, using summation notation, Sigma from A equal one or oh, four. Let me change the letter. K equal one. This is the index to M of the A sub K. K is equivalent to say A one plus A two plus A three plus da 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 da. The A is top in A sub M. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Another notation. Uh, in my opinion is better or short is to call this a sub n summation m first term in one arithmetic sequence and the formula is a sub m is equal n over two uh, parenthesis a1 plus a sub m so it's super super easy to find the, the sum of the, the first m element in one arithmetic sequence, you add in the first, you add in the first, you add in the last, divided by two is like an average, a multiplication by m means the amount of, of, of number that we have in the sequence. Let's see example to understand more clear. Suppose this example. Suppose can we have sixty plus sixty four plus sixty eight plus seventy two plus ba 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 one twenty. The last guy is one twenty. Find that. It's super. Okay, we're using the formula. A1 is obvious, A60. A sub M is the last one, okay, 120. No? But the only thing I don't know is M. I don't know how many. We have one, two, three, four, but I lost here, they count. Uh -huh. and so I don't know exactly, I need to discover what is M for 120, but it's easy. It's easy because you're using the famous formula a sub m is equal a1 plus a minus 1d. No? Uh -huh. By the way, the common differences in this example is 4, right? Because 64 minus 60 is 4, 68 minus 64 is 4, so d is 4, d is 4. It's so big, a1 is 60, the first one element. And the last one is 120. So 120 is equal to 60 plus a minus 1 multiplication by 4. Because this is 4. The only unknown in this equation is n, which is exactly what we need. Now, <clears throat> you subtracting 120 minus 60 divided by 4. And the answer is 15 because 60, 15, and 15 is n minus 1. Therefore, n alone, and 15 plus 1, n is 16. Wow! That means that 120 is in the position 16. 
Okay, now ready to apply that formula. The formula is a sub m is equal 16 divided by 2 because n is 16. Uh -huh, uh, the first one gets 60 and the last one with 120. Okay, so you put in the calculator, this is 180 divided by 290 times 16 is 1440. Do you understand very well this example? Okay, so basically the two topic that we're discussing in the arithmetic sequence is find the explicit general form. Well, well, first of all, identification. Is arithmetic or no? How you identification that? Because you compute the common differences and the common difference is constant. Four, two, three, I don't know. Secondly, uh, will be able to find the a sub n term in any position. Uh -huh. Now, secondly, our third one, uh, topic is the uh, compute the sum. But no, the sum adding one by one, 60 plus 64 plus no, no, no using the formulas. <clears throat> okay. Okay, let me try another example, more interesting example. Another example. Suppose four compute that plus four point five plus five plus five point five plus that 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 two one hundred. So we compute this, S sub M. So the S sub M formula is A1 plus A1 plus A sub M divided by two, it's super easy because A1 is four, look at that. A sub M is the last one. Okay, 100, two is the constant, and multiplication by M. It doesn't matter if you write like that, N over two, a1 plus a s sub m is the same. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I need to find n again. Okay, a again, to find the n, we using the formula for the explicit formula for the to find the any position. A sub m is equal a1 plus a minus 1 d. A sub m is 100, is the last one. A1 is 4 plus A minus 1 D. What happened? What is the noise? Oh, let me see. Putting off the microphone, please. Okay. Good. Uh, who is D? I forgot D. One of D is the common difference. If it exists, that's the third, thi the third thing you should do. You should try the 4.5 minus 4.5. 5 minus 4 is 8.5. 5.5 minus 5 is 0.5. So the common difference is 0.5. D is 0.5. It does it 0.5. And so for M, 100 minus 4 divided by 0.5 is equal to M minus 1. Uh -huh. uh, this is um, <coughs> 192 is equal to m minus 1, therefore m alone is 193. Okay, this is 100 is located in the position. This is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, so on. this is 193. Okay, now ready, ready, ready to apply the final formula, the, the last formula. The last formula is summation is equal. Uh, 4 is the first, look at that. Last case 100 divided by 2 and multiplication by m is 193. Super 100 plus 4 is uh, 104 divided by 2 is 52. So 52 multiplication by 193 is 10,036. Boom. 
Final. Any question, guy? Do you understand very well this or not? Come on, answer me. Sorry, it's the answer. Answer me. Do you understand or not? Yes, it's clear. It's clear, right? Okay, 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 okay. Uh, Christy, Alice, do you see guy put available? The the Alex. Answer me. What do you say, Professor? I say, you see, you see, okay, put available again, Alex, for you. Uh, yes, I saw, Professor. Okay, that's it. Gracias. Okay. Okay, now, see, you have no question about that. Let's move on to to the another sequence, which is geometric sequence. Geometric sequence. Okay, this is another special sequence, very, very important. Uh -huh. um, well, one example of the geometric sequence maybe is is boss This one half. Comma, one four, comma, one four eight, comma, bam, 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 bam. Okay, in that case, no subtraction, nice division, division. You, if you divide, for example, one over four, divided by previous, get one half. And you divide this, divided by this, this divided by this. Let's do it quickly. It's one over four. Time to over one is one half. Okay, if you divide now one over eight divided by one over four, we have one over eight times four over one, again four over eight get one half. And one half is common, is call it common ratio. A similar idea, but the word ratio indicate division. The common difference in the case subtraction. Uh -huh. so, so, normally, the notation for the common ratio is little r. Little r. So, so, the explicit formula for the geometric sequence is a sub n is equal a sub 1, que is the first one, multiplication by the ratio, common ratio r, raised to the n minus 1. This is the formula. Okay, compare with the arithmetic sequence a, a sub m is equal a1 plus a minus 1d. This is arithmetic sequence. And the geometric sequence is something like that. Well, I suppose I want to determine the a sub m explicit term of this. It's easy because a sub m is equal to the first guy, a sub 1, k is 1 half. Look at that. And the common ratio is a coincident, get one half, it's a coincidence. No, we have a N minus one. You can leave it like that, you can, of course you can, however much better put together is one half times one half is obvious case one half right to the M. Power. Because remember the point here is one. Uh -huh. And when you add this point, this one and this one cancel and stay only M. You leave it like that, you can. But you know, one is magic number. When you raise to the any power, it's one. The actually more elegant expression is one over two M. Boom. And it's obvious. And it's obvious. Look, suppose N equal one, F one half, N equal two is two to the second power before, and N to the A equal three is two to the third power. And we can predict any. Any. Suppose what is the next after that? 1 over 16. Where come from 1 over 16? N equal 4 is A sub 4 is 1 over 2 to the 4 power is 16. Boom. Final answer. Easy. 
Mm -hmm. This is the most example number one of the geometric sequence. Let's do another example. Everyone follow me? It's complicated or easy? Uh -huh. Go ahead, go ahead. Got it, good. It's good. easy. It's easy. So about this geometric sequence, 4, 16, 64, comma, bam, 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 bam. And so I need to find the, the general explicit uh, uh, general explicit, no? explicit what? Explicit formula no? for this sequence. No? So I realize clear that A1 is 4. Uh -huh. So I need to find the common ratio. Well, you divide 16 divided by 4 is 4, 64 divided by 16 is 4. Oh, it's a 4. Okay, and this example by coincidence is the same number, but no, it's the same number. No, 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 hello, hello. I want to put another example, you know. Okay, so now, what is the formula? The formula is a sub m is equal a1, r n minus 1 uh, is 4, uh -huh, and this is 4 raised to the n minus 1, it's so big as 4 to the n. Okay, 4 raised to the 1 power of 4, to the second power of 16, and so on. It's an elementary example. Let me complicate a little bit. Let me put a, a little bit more complicated example. Suppose this sequence, sample 3. Suppose that 10, 9, 81 over 10, 729 over 100, ba, 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 ba. I need to find, I need to find a sub n term. I need to find also one a sub 9. And the position 9. This is the position 1, the position 2, the position 3, the position 4. I need to determine here we have suppose 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in the position 9 here. What is the number here? Okay, the formula is clear. a sub m is equal a1. R a minus one. But first of all, I need to no 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 determine the the common ratio, no, because I need to do identification. Actually, as geometry sequence, see, we, see if we have no common ratio, and to say you cannot apply the formulas. So this is a common ratio is division. This number divided by this number is nine over ten. And leave it like that because you cannot simplification anymore here. And you divide this divided by this is eighty one over ten divided by nine. Wow, it's eighty one over ten times one over nine. And when you simplification a little bit, this I know very well that eighty one is nine times nine, no? At least this nine is cancelled and the state nine over ten. Do you see? Wow! This is the common ratio. And so you are doing this division, you get exactly the same. I don't want to watch time with this stupid arithmetic. Common ratio is nine over ten. Uh -huh. So my formula is a sub m for any position is equal. The first one, r a minus one. And the first one is ten. And the common ratio is nine over ten. Raised to the what 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 to the to the to the n minus one. Wow, this is a formula. You can leave it like that. You can you can. However, I saw that we can simplification a little bit. Suppose this is nine n minus one. This is point. This is ten n minus one, and we have another extra ten here. And you may be subtracting this exponent because division, no? Because it's, it actually is. 9 n minus 1 divided by 10 n minus 2, no? Because you subtract the n minus 1 minus 1. This is 1 exponent, no? And you put it in the bottom. That is the reason, guess 2. Okay, either way. Leave it like that. The way you prefer. It's equivalent. Oh, this one. Actually, I don't like too much this. Okay, this is you want to find for. For example, the position 9, okay, the only thing that you should do is plug it in. 9 raised to the 8 power, because 9 minus 1 is 8, and 10 to the 7 power, no, it's 9 minus 2, 7 power. 
Okay, just I put in my calculator. My, and the calculator give me that number, right? 4306721 divided by, how many zero? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 0, no? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 0. This is like a fraction. Um, another student said, no, professor, I don't like that way. Okay, you put in the calculator these, and you get the decimal approximation. Decimal approximation is 4.30467. It's equivalent. It's equivalent. Decimal approximation. Any question? It's clear? Yes. Okay, okay. Now, so you understand very well that part. Let's do it now the sum. What is the formula for the sum and geometry sequence? Okay, so suppose, suppose, suppose the formula. So formula using summation notation, sigma k1 to m to a to k. But this a to k obeyed the formula for the geometry is is actually is geometry a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus ta, 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 and stop and a sub n and the formula is a little bit more complicated but not too much is equal is equal a1 get the first one parenthesis one minus r to the n power divided by one minus r. This is the formula to go build the summation for the any arithmetic sequence. Let's see one elementary example to so understand the manipulation of the formula. And immediately I want to complicate more this. But first of all, easy. Suppose I add in one half plus one over four plus one over eight. And that's it. You say, well, professor, I can do it by hand because it's three elements. Okay, no problem. Uh -huh. My intention now is that you are doing by hand. And after we use that formula, and we compare see the answer is the same. Uh -huh. What is advantage and disadvantage? Suppose that now I include no three elements because actually this is position one, position two, position three. So the summation only consider three elements here. Suppose que I consider 300 elements. So by do it by hand is crazy. However, the formula is super fantastic. Do you understand the idea? There's only one motivation example that help me to understand the powerful of this formula. Okay, so say blah 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 blah. Let's do it. Uh, well. Uh, this common denominator to condense in this fraction, only one is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4 times 1 is 4. Plus 8 divided by 4 is 2 times 1 is 2. And 8 divided by 8 is obvious is 1 and 1. So the answer is 7 over 8. Wow, fantastic. I like that. However, let's do it using the formula. The formula says get the first guy. What is the first guy? The first guy is this, 1 half. Multiplication by one minus r, but I don't know who is r. R, what is the common ratio? What is the common ratio? You divide this divided by this. One over four divided by one half. One over four times two over one. It's one half. This is a example that we did before. Okay, the common ratio and the first element is the same. It's one half. So it's, but oh, no, 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 wait, wait. It's one minus one half. Okay, one minus one minus one half is the common ratio raised to the third power because we have three elements, no? Uh huh. Divided by one minus one half. I know the only disadvantage in this problem is that it's a fraction, but it's okay. So this is the one half. This is one over one over eight. It's clear, right? Because one to the third power is one, and two to the third power is eight, no? And the bottom we have exactly the same, one half, because one minus one half, this, is, this cancels. And this is one minus one over eight. Okay, so because seven over eight, because this is a over eight, 
and a minus one is seven, and we get the same answer. Super? Super clear? Yes. Ah, uh -huh, beautiful. Okay, so now I want to complicate a little bit. How? I complicate, well, I complicate doing mm, one thing que you see in calculus, que es serious, serious. Okay, and what, what is serious? Well, serious is, let me call, let me use a summation, summation notation. Suppose that we have a sub k for k equal one or k equal whatever one one is okay but to infinity so actually we have infinity elements a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus blah 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 but this is not finished to one you know continue forever so the first intuition you say one over of so you adding infinity number the answer is infinity so the, the thing is, this is not 100% true. So we have two possibilities. You have two possibilities. One possibility is, yes, you are right. The answer is infinity. Now, when this situation happens, this is called like the series diverge. However, sometimes no, sometimes it's a number, and they see uh, converge. Okay, the word converge indicates we go to the something. You know, converge means that you know que, eh, everything converge is going to the one specific number. No, and let me illustrate one example to understand. This is not clear for me. Suppose the same example. Suppose the same example. One half plus one over four plus one over eight. No? But suppose that this continues to, to, to forever. So the challenge is, is series converging or diverging? See, the answer is infinity, diverges. See, the answer is a number, converge. And so in the, in the, in the best scenario, okay, converge, at what number converge? This is challenge. So say, I have no idea, totally lost. However, let me use an intuition. Intuition, intuition, intuition. Suppose that we have one segment. Like that. Okay, I do not want to specification the length of this segment. You let me know. And you are in one half. Okay, this is one half. I suppose it's this, this part, one half. This is one half. Uh, and also, you adding one over four. Okay, that's was one. Well, suppose that this is zero. Suppose that this is one. Suppose that this is two. No. Uh huh. No, 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 no. But sorry, sorry. Let me to to understand more clear. Forget about that part. I change a little bit. Suppose, suppose that I was serious. I want to discuss it. It's, 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 it's similar, but I forgot one. Plus one half. Plus one over four. Plus one over eight. Plus the what is the next one over sixteen? No? Plus, but this is infinity. It's a series, no sequence. Okay, therefore, okay, this is my segment. My segment. This is zero. So you add in one first. I suppose that that distance is two, or this distance is one. Okay, help me to to indicate geometrically. This is this segment. So one is this segment. Let me use it in the color. I like. It's a one. The second in the in the in the summation is one half. 
Entonces, so after this, plus one half is this. Okay, so this segment is one. This segment is one half. So together, one plus one half is three half, no? Okay, three half is 1.5. It's no secret. Look, 1.5. This is 1.5. And so on. And so on. Then what is the next? The next is 1 over 4. 1 over 4 here now. 1 over 4 is, you take that segment, divide by 2 again. It's a 1 over 4. And so on. Uh-huh. And uh, 1 over 16. You see uh, any element, 1 over 8, sorry, is 1 over 8, is half of this. Okay. You see uh, any element that uh, you add in in the series, it's a smaller, smaller, smaller. So that's the paradox, the thing I don't understand very well. If you never finish or not, you never finish or not. Uh -huh. And do you think it's possible, at least, I want to prove mathematically after that, but this is just intuition, okay, this, um, this series, this series, this series, converge to the one number? Do you see the intuition, no, the formal mathematics, the intuition, do you think maybe, no, always, because, the element that you or the number that you add in the, is smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And see, so you adding, of course, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is infinity. Infinity 2 is infinity, it's divergent. However, in this case, it's smaller and smaller and smaller. Not necessarily, guys. This is very, very complicated, and you see more clear and calculus. But it's. Um, the intuition say, bueno, si the number is smaller and smaller, the, the sum no increasing forever to infinity, those is diverge. Do you see the idea? Professor, but uh -huh. if the number, like, it could become smaller, wouldn't it, like, eventually reach zero or no? No, 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 because it's community, no? It's one plus one point five. Ah, you see, que, no, no, no. No, exactly, miss. Okay, when the when the, you have a sub m and you approach it to infinity m, see this approach it to zero is smaller. No necessary condition to converge. But in this is a particular example, okay, it's geometric geometric series. Yes, I guarantee you could converge. But do you understand the idea? Okay, see, you are in infinity number. And this number is smaller, smaller, smaller. Maybe no guarantee 100%. No, uh, the series converges. Do you understand this idea a little bit or no? I want to prove formally now. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, oh. a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. No 100%. No. Uh huh. And this, uh, okay, okay, okay. I have a, I have a question. At uh, what number you believe can converge when I finish to some infinity element in this geometry series? So the answer is, is intuitively clear. The answer is yes. Mm, sorry. Yes. Converge it. But at what number converge it? This is the challenge, you know? No idea? Nobody there to say something? Two hundred? Three hundred? Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Isabella, no? No, I don't know. I'm thinking. Well, okay, okay. I'm waiting for you. Thinking. Who are you, miss? Say your name. Christy Elmi. Uh -huh. What is your opinion? No opinion. No opinion. What do you want? Okay, I, I hear your voice. 
No. Ah. I'm thinking. I'm trying to understand it. I'm not thinking quite. Mm, but nobody have idea. Okay, let me prove mathematical. No. Okay, you have formula. You have formula for S sub M. I want to repeat the formula. The formula is uh, A1 parenthesis 1 minus R M divided by uh, 1 minus R. This is the formula. Uh -huh. So what is the challenge? The challenge is determine the summation for the series. Okay, I want to call S, not M. Okay, S equal that expression, but I suppose Okay, you m approach it to infinity. Uh, you don't know this operation because in calculus the teacher is playing limit. It's another tools no? they use in calculus. I try to use in the intuition. Uh -huh, but it's super easy. Look, let me show you. Uh, suppose you split, spread, separate, split this formula like that. The common denominator is A1 divided by 1 minus R, get that part. Multiplication by 1, no? Okay, it's, it's the same. Minus A1 RM divided by 1 minus R. Yeah, I suppose que N is infinity. Infinity is no number. Infinity is a symbol que indicate que es huge, huge number. Okay, uh -huh. not necessary to so say now the operation using infinity is very, very complicated because sometimes it's very, very contradictory uh, answer. However, however, I can see, I can see that that part of the formula do not depend on M. Uh -huh. Entonces, it doesn't matter that N is 3,000, 3 billion, uh, 10 billion, it stays the same constant, no? However, that part, no. That part depending on the M. However, if you assume okay, little r, que is the common ratio, is less than one. Well, the actual value, because maybe it could be positive or negative, is less than one. When you this raise to the one huge number, this part go to zero. And this is obvious, guys. Okay? Look, suppose that the ratio is to uh -huh. Entonces, es R to the M es 2 to the M. And when you suppose 2 to the infinity, it's obvious that it's infinity. Because this exponent is a huge number. However, so you have R equal 1 half. It's a fraction, less than 1. Does it, therefore, you have 1 over uh, 2 raised to the M power, que es 1 over 2 to the M power. And when the n approaches to infinity, well, 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 this is 1 over 2 to the infinity, and 2 to the infinity is infinity, right? Uh -huh. But 1 over infinity is approaching to 0. So uh, any time the, the a number is small, small, small. This is easy to understand. Look, let me show you. Let me show you. Some students say, no, I don't understand. It's super easy. Look, suppose 1 over 10 is 0.1. Suppose 1 over 100 is 0.01. I try to simulate que this number increasing to infinity. Okay, to infinity mean que the now is 1000. is 0 0.001. Do you see how this number increasing, this number decreasing, smaller and smaller, but not negative, approach it to zero. Do you see that? Yes or no? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. That is the justification. Okay, that part is go to zero under that supposition that the common ratio is less than one. Okay. Now, what are the condition? You you find you you find two things in one step. You find two things. Okay, if if, 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 
my summation corresponds with the geometric sequence and the actual value of the common ratio is less than one. Aromatically, I know that my series converge. Excellent. And converge to one number, that number. And converge it to, let me call S. Ah, no, no, no. S. S. Equal A1. One minus one. Bang. Double bang. And this is the thing that you apply in the, in the product. I bring a lot of problems for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, 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 no. I want to come back to the beginning of the motivation example. Uh, you identification, okay. The motivation example, remember, was one plus one half plus one over four plus one over eight plus one, one over 16 plus infinity element series. We are talking about series, infinity element. Uh -huh. And your identification gets geometry series and the common ratio is one half. Wow, fantastic. So the common ratio is less than one, exactly like that condition. Uh, it automatically, you see get, uh, this series converge. Okay, super. Uh, converge at the one number. Ah, uh, that formula. S is equal A1 divided by 1 minus R. Who is A1? A1 is the first. A1. And common ratio is 1 half. So it's 1 minus 1 half. Okay. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. And reciprocal 1 half is 2. Converge to 2. Que es exactly. We, we, we predict geometrically in that part. So you continue adding small, 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 infinity, you end in two, converge. Do you see the idea now? More clear? Yes or no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let I bring some interesting example. Okay, one example. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Series. Look, suppose this example. Uh, two plus four third plus a over nine plus pa 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 infinity. And so this is a series. Yeah, I want to investigate if this series converges or oh, diverges. Uh huh, and also in the a scenario gets converged at one number converged. Okay. As so first of all, I want to see if this is geometric or not. Geometric, geometric series. Remember the series word is associated when you have infinity. See, we have no infinity is a finite number of numbers to say you're using the traditional formula okay, in which you consider m but in this case no because n is infinity no okay if you divide if you divide this guy divide divide four third divided by two is four third time a one half no? okay it's two third okay two third two third two third very well. If you divide to get to verify, double check, you know, a over nine divided by four over three is a over nine times three over four. Ah, we can simplification a little bit. We can simplification how? Well, no, four divided by four is one, a divided by four is two. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3, is 2 thirds again. Wow, fantastic. I determined that the common ratio is 2 thirds. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And just I know, I know very, very, very well 
que one series converge when the common ratio or the absolute value, because maybe a positive or negative, two thirds, if the common ratio is two thirds, que es less than one, it's over, right? Entonces, now, in automatic, I know que our series converge. Okay. Okay, super. Pero converge to what number? Bueno, the formula. The formula say, a summation for the series S, S, no, S, M. S, M is summation for the M element. S alone indicate infinity number. Is a1 divided by 1 minus r. a1 is 2 is the first element. 1 minus 2 third is r. Okay, okay, okay. Just look, look, look. Let me manipulate this operation. This is, you find the LCD, it's 3. This is 3 minus 2, no? And three minus two one. And division is two times flip with that three over one is six. Wow, amazing. Converge to six. That is unbelievable, but it's true. This infinity sum is converged because the common ratio is less than one. That means that somehow the turn you are in the sequence is smaller, smaller, smaller. But no, it's enough. This condition. There are some examples, not geometric. Another, another that you study in calculus, okay, decreasing, however, diverging. But in this case, it's yes, geometric series. The fact is, it's yes, geometric series, and the common ratio is less than one. Aromatic guy converges, converges to a value, and the value can give me that form. Okay, let's see one application example of this. Application, application. Do you follow me or no? Totally lost. Eh? So this is easy. The, the sequence is, is easy. Topic or no? Yes, it, it's okay so far. It's okay so far. Okay. Look, motivation example. This is very, very interesting. Suppose that number. 0.6, but 0.6 repeated. Uh -huh. You know, okay, this is 0.6 plus 0.06 plus 0.006, and so on, infinity, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, so my, my goal is well first of all identification see this series converge or divergent huh? uh, why now determine the value of this because okay okay let me let me explain something okay this is you know it's a decimal number okay have infinity decimal places however is rational or irrational What do you think? Is rational or irrational? You have no idea what is rational or irrational, no? Uh -huh. For example, for example, uh, the famous number pi. I think it's irrational. She said that it's irrational. Why? Why? What is the reason? No, no, you express your opinion. You are students. And to say I, I, I want to discuss it. What, what, are the, what is the idea for the rational number or irrational number? What is the rational number? What is the definition rational? Or what is the is rational? Is not a whole number? An irrational is a decimal? Aha, uh -huh. this is definition is incomplete. Because when you have, for example, a whole number, right? Two, three, it's rational, it's obvious, right? And what about three or four? Is rational or irrational? 
four or five, uh, six or five. This is rational. This family of this guy is rational or irrational? Irrational, no. No, it's rational. It's rational. Rational is a number that we can write like a like a fraction or decimal. Okay, this is definition. The rational set is p divided by q, and p and q are whole number or in general integer number, positive or negative. This is definition of the rational. Rational. Repeat, it's super easy. It's a number that we can write as a fraction. Okay? An irrational, an irrational is a number that is impossible write like a fraction. No, no. Why? Because have infinity decimal number. For example, the famous pi that everyone knows study in geometry is 3.14, 15, 9, bam, 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 and continue for it. This is the this is the question, no? The number that I put it at the beginning here of the problem is rational or irrational? What do you think? This number. And some students say, well, no, I have no idea. Some students say, well, no, 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 no. Uh, maybe it's irrational because it has infinity decimal place. Okay. But you are wrong. Irrational since we can turn it into a fraction. Uh -huh. so, so you can turn it to the fraction in this case or no? So, so we can, we can write 0 0.6 repeated like a fraction or no yes or no or no idea i want to prove this yes yes uh-huh why how uh you can do six repeated over ten repeated uh-huh six repeated over ten repeated no 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 no, no, because it's a different place. No, no, no. Look, look, you can write this 6 over 10. Your idea is correct. This is 6 over 100. Yes or no? This is 6 over 1,000. Yes or no? It's your idea? Uh, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Very well. Now, the challenge is discover number one. Okay, this summation is a series, a geometric series, C converge or diverge. C converge, fantastic. We get the decimal. You get the, the fraction. And so this number is rational. Uh -huh. So it's, it's uh, well, okay, if you, for example, if you divide this, divided by this, it's 6 over 100 divided by 6 over 10. It's obvious that 6 over 100 times 10 over 6. The 6 is cancelled, and the answer is 1 over 10 because it's reduced that. And 1 over 10 is less than 1. And according to the idea for the geometric C, C, uh, series, converge it. And converge it to what value? Well, I have no idea. The formula is S is equal to A1, 1 minus R. A1 is the first guy, which is this. Okay, by the way, in fraction is this. Okay, by the way, when you simplification is 3 over 5, because 6 and 10 is divisible by 2, no? So actually, it's 3 over 5 divided by 1 minus R, which is 1 over 10. 1 over 10. Okay, nice. Now, 3 fifths. Divide by 9 over 10, no? Because this one you can consider in your mind, well, at least common denominator 10, 10 minus 1 is 9, no? Okay, so 3 fifths divided by this, flip it up. This is 10, this is 9, 
And simplification, why not? Divided by 3, 1, divided by 3, 3, divided by 5, 1, divided by 5, 2. Test two terms. And there's no secret for you. There's no secret for you. Uh, so you put in your calculator now, now. You have calculator now here? You have calculator now? Yes. Put two divided by three in the calculator and press enter. And you see 0 0.6666. And of course, the calculator have physical display. In the physical display, you can now see infinity six. Two divided by three is zero point. Uh -huh. Entonces, they calculate a round of a trunket, like a seven, the last digit, right? But actually, six, 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 and continue forever. So, my question is this series converge or diverge? Converge or diverge? Converges. Ah. And my next question is 0 0.6 repeated. Is it rational or irrational? Rational. Absolutely, because 0 0.6 repeated, I prove mathematically that we can write like a fraction. Therefore, it's rational. Uh huh. So when the when, when, the, when the decimal is repeated, it's rational. When the decimal is not repeated, it's, you know, it's crazy, like a pike, a 3.14, 15, 9, so that every digit is different. So it's irrational. Okay? Okay, okay, no bad, no bad. What do you think about, what do you think about using intuition? 0 0.3, repeat what is the what is, is rational irrational and converge divergent and what value what do you think about that 0 0.3 repeat okay 0 0.3333333 what do you think rational and convergent convergent and what value miss it's important this is normal it's is super easy you see in your in your and in, in, in your face. Um, one, 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 one over three? Absolutely, because it's one half this, no? So you divide 0 0.6 repeated by two is 0 point. Do you see or no? You want to, I prove mathematical, but no. It's, ele it's elementary, it's kindergarten problem, no? And what about 0 0.9 repeated? What do you think about that? Think about this. Wow, this is a little bit weird. This is 0 0.99999 infinity nine. What is the answer of this? Is converging or diverging? What do you think? Well, I suppose K converging because we just told the professor okay, when the DGS is repeated, it's the same, and does it converge? So we can find a fraction equivalent to that, no? Nobody know that? Nine over ten. Nine over ten. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Nine over ten means eight point nine. And we are talking about infinity nine. No, it's equal. You trunk it. You take the knife and you cut up the second nine and the rest. No. What is the answer? No mathematical proof. Uh -huh, go ahead, go ahead. Somebody want to say something? Nobody? No idea? Abraham, you want to say something? No. I couldn't hear your microphones cutting out. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, you can use it in the chat if you want to say something. Juan, no? Juan? Abraham? Who is speaking? 
Abraham speaking now. Maybe it's on my end. I don't see the screen. I'm going to try and refresh. I want to uh, come back again the the class in person. Online is uh, it's very very complicated because some students have no. Okay, to say I left to extra credit. Compute zero point nine repeated. What is the what is? But, but, but you 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 believe it's rational or irrational? Rational or irrational? I mean, opinion. I want to hear opinion. Only opinion. 0 0.9 repeated. Is rational or irrational? Rational. Uh huh. Why? Because the number is repeating, so you can make a fraction out of it. Nice. Nice. I like that answer. Okay. The challenge is compute at what value to say. So you expand using the series, our series is converged. I suppose, right? Correct. Ah, uh, the challenge is discover our value converge, right? Right? Right, right. Uh -huh. so I left, I left this for extra credit. Take advantage extra credit. The student can do it very, very bad in the semester. And also one more, one more, extra, extra, extra. Five points for this. And five points for another, okay? 0 0.40. Uh, let me see in my paper. Doesn't matter which one. Yeah, 0 0.45 repeat. Like that. Okay, actually 0 0.45, 45. 45, infinity 45. What do you think? Is rational or irrational? What do you think? Rational or irrational? Rational. Rational, but the same reason, no? It repeat. It doesn't matter if it's one digit or two digit or three digit or four digit. Uh -huh. So now the challenge is, is it rational, but what is the fraction here? This infinity nine is equal to something. This infinity 45 is equal to something. 10 point extra, guy. Right? Take advantage. Okay? I want, in the time that we have, start new section. It's super, super easy. Super, super easy. Que es eh, mathematical induction. Mathematical induction. Okay, mathematical induction is a fantastic method. Okay, help me to prove equations. The equation that you have said the last time, no, not today, last time. I want to prove using mathematical induction. So, so to understand mathematical induction, I bring a motivation example illustrate the idea behind mathematical induction. Suppose, suppose que I discover this idea. Suppose que you add odd numbers. Suppose que you add one, no, one and one. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 3 plus 5 is 9. Oh, but I discover now some regularly. So you square this is 1. Uh, suppose this is n equal 1, get the first statement. n equal 2 is the second statement. So now I discovered that 2 squared 4. Oh, would be true or no? I don't know. n equal 3 is 9. So it's 3 squared 9. Let me try one more because I am not sure. Suppose n equal 4. Uh, so it's 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. So basically, in this addition, only I include odd numbers. Okay, this is 12, 15, 16. And 16 is equivalent to 4, 
square is it into saying, wow, wow. See, we continue. We're going to do one more, one more. Curiosity, what is it? S1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9 huh? is the next odd number in the list. Uh, this is 16, I did that. And 16 plus 9 is 25. So it is 5 squared is 25. So I, I cannot do infinity summation. No, no, no. no. So now the, 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 the thing that I have to prove is if this formula, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus ta, 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 plus the odd numbers, only odd numbers, is equal n squared. Uh -huh. This is what the Isubain formula for the odd number, guys. Well, let me see. The sequence of the odd number is 1, 3, 5, 7, no? 9. This sequence is arithmetic because when you subtract in here is 2, when you subtract in this is 2, when you subtract in this is 2, when you subtract in this, the common difference is 2. And the formula is A sub M is equal A1 plus n minus 1 d a sub n a1 at the first is 1 plus a minus 1 times 2 so a sub n term is 1 plus 2 m minus 2 okay it's 2 m minus 1 oh this is the formula 2 m minus 1 this formula 2 m minus 1 represent the sequences of the odd number this is no secret. This is super elementary. But the problem that we have now is bigger. It's more complicated. Is proof this. Will be true or no? For any. Suppose we, well, N6, 7, 8, 5,000, 5 million, 5 billion, we stay the same relationship. This is the idea for the mathematical induction. The word induction indicate us, induction indicate us that we can find general conclusion for the particular example. It's like a detective, like FBI. FBI see a different, different, different detail of the extent of crime and try to discover what is the killer. Okay, so it's, for one particular elementary, you form the pieces and you find the conclusion. This is the conclusion. This is our conclusion. 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 But this conclusion, I want to study now. This is a moment. This is the motivation example. Can I promise can I solve in a few seconds using mathematical induction? But I want to explain now mathematical induction. It's the, it's the way, the approach we use it to uh, find this conclusion. Okay, now this is the most important. This is a motivation example. I suppose you understand this or no? Do you follow me? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, now let's move on to the mathematical induction principle. Okay, mathematical, we, mathematical induction principle. It's obvious that we cannot do for infinity possibility, no? You have no life to do infinity. And so you are doing one million, no? Because maybe in one million one, it's wrong. Okay, so now, we discover one principle that contain two steps, and you prove that. The first step is call it basic step. Basic step. And the basic step is super easy. You prove that S1 is true. What mean X1? The statement 1 at N equal 1. 
Suppose they are usually when you apply n equal one, you prove this or no? You put this true or a false? Uh huh. Uh, but suppose que no, que false. Entonces, so you try n two because some example no necessary start in one. Suppose que n in one is false, but I try one more. Two is true. Ah, perfect. So the basic step no necessary is at n equal one. Maybe it's at n equal two. Suppose que this is false. Pero no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, the majority of the example that you see today is you try x1, que es at n equal 1, and you verify que es true. And that's it. n equal 1. Okay. We finish this, the first step. And the last step, que es the second one, that's it, es the inductive step. Okay, pay attention now, it's a little bit complicated to understand. In the inductive step, you assume que S of K is equal to true. And what is S of K? Well, S of K is intermediate value. So our problem have different N equal one, two, three, four, five, down, 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 and ending in N, no? Okay, okay, but no, no, I assume intermediate value k here, k is in between one and so k is a value completely arbitrary between one and n. No touch the endpoint, no, no. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, maybe 20, maybe 21. You assume it's true. So this statement is true. Now, if you will be able to prove that this is true, imply que x k plus one this condition is also true you see how therefore the super fantastic conclusion is que x k plus one is also true this is a little bit hard to understand but i want to explain using domino piece do you know this is my table this is different domino piece. This is domino piece one, domino piece two. Here in the middle we have domino piece K. And this is the domino piece K plus one. Uh -huh. you, you assume that this is true. Okay. Uh -huh. However, this is true. However, see, so you will be able to prove that if the condition true for this imply that this is also true, this process for sure continue forever exactly when the domino piece is going down and touch the next and going down and touch the next and going down. And this process continue forever. That you don't need to prove infinity using Mathematical induction. Do you follow me? Uh -huh. And this is the conclusion. This is true forever. Do you follow me, guy, or no? Confusing, eh? No? Yes or no? Answer me. What happened? Are you disconnected? Yes, we yes, are. Yes. OK, OK. Let's see example, no? The theoretical blah, 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 no clear. However, in the example, what example we are solving? Well, the first motivation example we are doing at the beginning. I want to prove, professor, I want to prove, I want to prove, oh, let me make it soon. Here, I want to prove Using mathematical induction principle, okay, one plus three plus five plus seven, que es the sum of the any uh, odd number que we can represent like this, two k minus one. I explain why I come from that part. Using arithmetic is equal, is equal no k. What is the reason I put k? No k. M actually is n squared. Wow. 
Ok, ok. Entonces, este one, base step. Base step. Base step. I want to prove que S1 es S1 is true. How you prove this? Bueno, X1 is the first guy, this one. And you evaluate here N1. I need to prove que 1 is equal 1 is square. Because N is 1. It's obvious, it's true. Chum, I did that. Now, the inductive step. Suppose, assume, que es ok, es true. How you suppose this? Let me show you. Because always it's the same guy. This is not complicated. You, you copy exactly the same problem that we have at the beginning. But, I copy exactly the same. But you replace M for K. Because you are pick one intermediate value. And you suppose that this statement is X to K is true. This is the assumption. So, so now I want to investigate the next piece of the domino. Okay, the next piece of the domino is 1 plus 3, S to K plus 1. 1 plus 3, plus 5, plus 7, plus ta 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 ta, plus 2K minus 1. But we have another, que es the next. And the next, mm, 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 I have no idea, es, es 2K plus 1, minus 1, something like that. You replace K for K plus 1. Entonces, is, you apply distributed property here, is 2K plus 2, minus 1. Is 2K plus 1. Okay, nice. 2K plus 1. Do you follow me so far? You include one more piece of domain. This is one piece, and the next is K plus 1. So you replace in the, in the explicit formula, uh, K plus 1. And you replace always K and the other part here. In the right hand side, you see that we have k squared. No, no, no. It's k plus one squared. Make sense? This is the most important moment. Do you understand this or no? Yes, I mean, yes, I mean. Okay. Now, according to this assumption, this part is exactly the same of this part. And I suppose case k squared. You replace this for k squared plus 2k plus 1 should be equal k plus 1. And the rest is algebra. I need to prove that this algebraically is equivalent. Okay, this is trinomial k squared plus 2k plus 1. It's a binomial but a square, and you foil k plus 1 times k plus 1 together is k squared plus k plus another k plus 1. Mm -hmm. Therefore, k squared plus 2k plus 1 is equal k squared plus 2k plus 1. Wow, it's identity. It's the same expression. They are equivalent 100 CI yeah, proof. Proof, 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 proof. Proof. Using mathematical induction. Do you understand this or no? Okay, it's super easy. It's more, you know, a, a more name than the, the, the action that you should do. You, you try one, uh, the first statement one equal true, and so you want to continue with the statement two equal true, but you never finish that. So you assume one intermediate value, okay. You suppose it's true. And you try to include the next in both sides of the equation, no? So you get identical expression, it's because this continues forever. Clear or no? 
Clear, clear. Ajá. Uh -huh. Okay, entonces, now, this is a moment, important moment, important, super important moment, in which I want to prove the equation que you, you see and you believe with me que es true. Remember, when you study summation, you study summation, summation from k equal one, uh -huh, k equal one to m, of k, que by the way is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus ta 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 plus m. And so you, you, I put in the bar in that moment, que es n, n plus 1 divided by 2, no? And you say, well, that's okay, I understand. But I want to prove que this is true. You see mathematical induction, no? Do it. Step basis, stay. That is proof that S1 is true. X1 is the first guy, and you evaluate here N1. So says 1 is equal 1 parenthesis 1 plus 1 divided by 2. 1 plus 1 is over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. No, it's true. Got it. Boom. On the inductive. A step que es el más complicado part es yo asumo que eso que es true tú asumo that es super easy you copy the same formula but now you don't finish in m finish in k que k hay su voz que es intermediate value entonces super easy es just copy the same original problem, but you replace n for k under the assumption that k is intermediate value, right? Now, I want to dedicate to investigate what happened with the next guy, which is k plus 1. It's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus blah, 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 plus k plus the next, which is k plus 1. Okay, you include one extra, no? Here. After, on the right hand side, you replace k plus 1. So, k okay, now is no k, it's k plus 1. And this is k plus 1 plus 1, no? Okay, actually, it's k plus 2, no? Uh, not necessary to write like that. It's k plus 2. But remember, we assume that this statement is true. So you replace that part is equivalent to k, k plus one, or two, plus k plus one. Equals something I don't want to copy now. I want to manipulate a little bit that part. Uh -huh. And after see a necessary manipulating the other part in order to prove case identical idea. Oh no. In this case, I condensing in one common denominator. Common denominator is common denominator is two, obviously. So, so we have k k plus one plus two times k plus one. Wow, easy. Look at that. What's going on? K plus one is common factor, I factor out. And stay k plus two. This k is this k. This two is this two. Over two. Wow, fantastic. And this is equal to that. Don't necessarily touch this. Proof. One, two, and three bang. Bang, bang, bang. Good or not good? Mathematical induction. Super fantastic way to prove, and in mathematics, there are different methods to prove something. And one of them is mathematical induction. Another is a contradiction. You know, this is another completely different topic, but mathematical induction occupy important place in the traditional method to prove something in mathematics. We have time to do at least one more, yes. Uh, guy? Everyone follow me, understand the idea? 
Yes. 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 Okay. So, so my plan is do one more example. Stop. Well, I don't know. See, we have. Yeah. Stop. One more. One more is important for me. One more is important for me. One more. Okay. Uh -huh. Remember, those a Tuesday. I need to teach you another topic and start a review. Suppose I don't finish the review, we continue third day. Uh -huh. uh, that's it. Remember, uh, the test is due uh, uh, April 28th, uh, third day, next third day, but uh, midnight, so you have one. So uh, um, but you have time, you have time. Not too much, but you have time. Suppose this. Suppose I want to prove using mathematical deduction, okay, this summation from K1 to M of the K square. Oh, this is another formula that we are studying, no? Okay, by the way, this is one square plus two square plus three and square and so on to K square is equal is equal m uh, sorry this is not k this is m k is the index variable k is variable is one two three four five and the last one is obvious you say. and the formula say is n time m plus one time two m plus one divided by six wow this is a little bit more complicated okay no problem we are doing exactly the same uh, basic step uh -huh, now I don't need to repeat again no no, no. you you in, in the in the and your test the problem of the mathematical induction you, you prove that x1 is true how well you take the first and this evaluating one so say one is square one and this evaluating one is one one plus one two times one plus one divided by six. One plus one is two. Two times one is two plus one is three. Three times two is six. Times one is six. Six divided by six is one. Boom, that's true. Right? Yes, yes. Aha. Now the inductive gets the most interesting part. No? You assume that it's okay, it's true. Uh -huh. So it's easy because you only replace one square plus two square plus three square plus ta 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 plus no n anymore. It's k square equal k k plus one two k plus one divided by six. Okay. Now the next is k plus one. Is the is the bridge. Okay, help me to understand that this continues forever, no? Okay, so one more is represent one square, two square, three square, plus ta ta ta, k square, and you include one more, k is k plus one square. Uh, and you include here in the right hand side one more, k is k plus one, so you replace k, plus k plus one, you say k plus one plus one is k plus two. This is elementary, but this is not elementary. So this is two k plus one plus one. Is two k plus two plus one. Wow, it's two k plus three. No? So this is converting now to k plus three divided by six. So far, so, everyone follow me? Yes. Okay. okay. No bad. Well, remember the assumption, that part is equal to this. I'm plugging in. K, K plus one, 2K plus one, divided by six, plus K plus one square, should be equal to that. Okay, I don't want to copy. Maybe I need to manipulate a little bit or no? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Condensing one common denominator, the least common denominator, obvious, is six. Then we have k, k plus one, 
2k plus 1, plus 6 times k plus 1, k squared. Equal something. Okay, at least I saw k, k plus 1. Look at that. It's a common factor. A factor out. K plus 1, out. And we have now here, let me put the bracket. K times 2k plus 1. This is algebra, guys. Right? Plus 6 times k plus 1. The reason is clear because we have 2k plus 1, you factor out 1, you stay 1 here and not here, divided by 6. Okay, now what should I do? I lost, but I don't know. The, using my algebra knowledge, I try to distribute here, why not? This is 2k squared plus 2k. plus 6k plus 6 and everything divided by 6 sorry I make a mistake here this is not 2 this is 1k no? because it's k times 1 hello now combine lighter combine lighter is k plus 1 uh -huh. Inside the bracket, we have 2k squared plus 7k plus 6 divided by 6. Okay, so I come back at the beginning. Uh, too long algebra. Uh -huh. And I don't know. Let me try to prove that this is equal to this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, okay, okay, clear. That part at least is this part. And that part is six is that part. Basically, to say focus C in the multiplication foil, this guy and this guy together, uh, and to say k plus one, I, I separate here and six. Why not separate? I pay attention in the foil here. Multiplication k times two k, two k squared. K times three, three k. 2 times 2 is 4k. And 3 times 2 is 6. Okay, one more time we combine later. Huh? 2k squared plus 7k because 3 plus 4 is 7. Huh? Divide by 2. Okay, and this is equal to this. This is equal to this. Okay, and this is equal to this. Wow. And we compare this and this. Exactly the same. I prove. This was example. Very, very interesting example in which you need to manipulate both sides, right hand side and left hand side. Clear? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, I want to, I want to anticipate something about the next topic, but no, 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 no in detail. It's only the Present the name, present the idea, the base idea. Que the last part, and the semester is over, guys. Okay, and this is the binomial. Binomial theorem. Binomial theorem. Binomial theorem was discovered for Newton when the Newton was a, a 22 years old. You know, Newton is a genius, right? And the formula for the binomial theorem is a plus b raised to the n power is equal. Summation. This is a summation notation, guys. From k0 to m of the combinatorial number that I want to explain in a few seconds, a, okay, the a is the same, the same a, raised to the n minus k exponent times b to the k exponent. Wow, Newton formula, when the, he was 22 years old. 
Uh -huh. I try. I try. Uh, what is the combinatorial number, guys? Combinatorial number is symbolic. N K is N factorial divided by K factorial N minus K factorial. Let me recall factorial. Factorial is super easy when you, for example, compute uh, four factorial. The majority of calculator have to compute directly factorial, but also most of you have known you have conventional calculator. It's four times three times two times one. So you're decreasing, no? This is 12, 24. It's a factorial. And this combinatorial number is a formula that is using a probability and a statistic to find the combination. That is the reason it's combinatorial number. So suppose that you have four elements and you combine three by three. So it's combinatorial number for three. So you have four elements, I don't know, a triangle, circle, a square, and, rom and rhombus, four elements. And I need to form a combination, these guys, three by three. So a triangle, circle, square, a circle, a square, triangle, a rhombus, sorry, uh -huh. uh, but three by three. Three by three. How many combinations? Why don't you compute this combinatorial number, right? And this is easy. It's four factorial divided by three factorial the, the uh, and four minus three factorial, no? Uh -huh. And and uh, four minus three is one, and one factorial is obvious so one. So that part disappears, no important. And four factorial we can expand like a four times three factorial, no? And I stop here because I know in the bottom we have three factorial, and this guy is one, no? And one is invisible, and disappear that guy, and we have four, four combination. But this is another idea. The idea is this is the coefficient of the binomial theorem discovered for Newton. No? Let me, let me, let me, let me try. Let me try, let me try, let me try. Today is only introduction. Next time we are doing problems. Okay, suppose, 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 suppose okay, we have a plus b raised to the zero power. S1. Suppose okay, you have a plus b raised to the one power. is a plus b. Suppose okay, we have a plus b raised to the second power. is a square plus twice a b plus b squared. Now Newton so this regularly and write one triangle like that one that one is that one and the coefficient here is one also i could write one one that was for n zero that was for n one for n two is one two one look at that one two one uh -huh. So he predicted a plus b cubic. Oh, oh. n to the third power, so n equal three is one, three, three, and one. We're confront this number. Well, it's easy. You adding, look, suppose you need to find that number. You adding this number plus this number. And this number is this plus this. And this is the property of the combinatorial number. If you foil this, it gets too long. The answer is, look, the first guy is a cubic plus coefficient C1 here. Coefficient C1, invisible. Three times a square B plus three times a B square plus B cubic. Yeah, this coefficient is 1, 3, 3, 1. Look at that, exactly what we predicted here. And according to the formula, the exponent of the a is decreasing k by k, you so say k zero to k three. So it's, it's use a super easy. See the first is a q, this is second, this is one, and no a. And the and the exponent for the b is increasing. It's no b, one b, two b, and three b. Do you see the regularity? 
Do you see or no? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, I predict now A plus B to the four power and that's it for today. Well, 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 if you continue the Pascal, this is Pascal triangle, Pascal triangle. And the mathematics is called this triangle, like a Pascal. Suppose n equal four, and one here, this is four, one plus three, four, three plus three is six, and three plus one is four, and one. The coefficient is one, four, six, four, and one. And one important is the expansion of the binomial theorem I contain, see four power contain five. So we we'll contain one more, and it's logical because my, my summation is starting zero from n. It, from zero to n, including zero, is n plus one terms. So when you expand this, it's obvious. Look, second power, give me three. Third power, give me four. Uh, four power, give me five. And what is the five guy? The five guy, I, a to the four, plus four times, a cubed b, plus six times, look at that, the number, one, four, six, a square b, b, b square, increasing the exponent for the b, and decreasing the exponent for the a, four, ta four times a, b cubic, plus b four. End of story. Do you see? And I stop. It's enough for today. Okay. So there's so going to be, gonna be one, one on the right, the right and on the, on the third time sign. You compute it, compute it. Say again, say again. Like there's like always going to be one at each end. Means I don't understand typing. I like, see. Oh, like the uh, number one. It speaks it speak slowly because the audio is in three minutes. Oh, but, 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 but. <laughs> like the number one, like there's always going to be like a one on each end. Uh huh. Like, like every time, like you compute it, like there's always going to be a one. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry for this. In the next uh, lecture, I want to do a, a, a lot of examples illustrate very, very, very easy, 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 the application for the binomial theorem of formula, okay? Who, who are you, Isabella? No? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye, guys. Let's continue next Tuesday. Bye, Prophet. Thank you.